hello guys this is your masterpiece today video i'm gonna be dealing with uh hyundai here which we have uh, that's a uh, 2001 hyundai and the problem with this very car here this santa fe is that uh, we're not getting any vss signal on the scanner and uh, this is creating a lot of our uh, drivability issues and that is why the owner decided to hit me up to see if I can be able to get this solved. Now, uh, if you have got that some sort of any Hyundai and it's giving you P0500, then this is one of those kind of problem because here, this is what you're gonna be dealing with here. So this 2001 model, uh, I've tried a couple of things. First of all, I did have some kind of uh, a sensor that was broken there. I replaced the sensor and this sensor we're talking about here is a v, uh, one of the uh, transmission output speed sensor output shaft speed sensor it was actually damaged so the wiring also was damaged so i got another replacement which i replaced it and it's now giving a very good uh, signal but this very vss which you're talking about here is a nightmare which i'm trying to see if i can be able to solve because if without it then this very car here is pretty much going to junkyard. So if you have uh, had this kind of problem before and you replace a VSS, any Hyundai model or any car, and you replace a VSS sensor and the problem persists. So I think this is gonna be some kind of a video which you might need to watch because I'm gonna be going through every tricks, every uh, dots to connect everything which I've known so far with the knowledge which I've gathered so far So I see if I can be able to pull this one off So quickly without wasting your time. Let me switch the camera over So we can get it uh, started and here we go Now this is the guy Santa Fe 2001 model. So what I'm gonna be using today. I'm gonna be using a multimeter as much as uh, is can too. So the first place which I'm gonna be starting with here is uh, I'm gonna be starting from the engine bay. So as the matter of uh, as for obvious reasons, I have actually I've actually uh, got the hood pop up. So let me go over there and uh, let's begin the testing what we need to do and uh, i'll tell you all i've got out so far now before this very problem here this car have experienced some sort of problem before and i solved it i got it back working i don't know what happens the customer decided to change his mind to test some other technicians now that's a brief of history from there Something terrible happened. The car will start, but it won't shut off. Now, talk about the output shaft speed sensor, which I mentioned earlier. This is the output shaft speed sensor. You can see the connector is damaged, but this guy could be still working. But I've got it replaced, and you can see the wiring right there. Now, let's go into the guy that actually brought us here but i'm gonna be needing to find something to hang my camera so you can follow along now for you to actually get access to here uh there is an air box here and you got the air flow meter here so you need to remove that it's been secured by two 10 millimeter but some actually can go up to three so losing that screw when you pop the cover open remove the filter then the screw should be holding the other uh, half of the box down so you lose it out then right there so i'm gonna be hooking up the, this guy on a camera on a the camera stand so we can get a direct visual we start testing and seeing what we need to expect and what we're getting you know there have to be some sort of a basement if you are trying to solve a problem like this there is gonna be some a uh, point where you're gonna be starting then you walk your way up from there 
Now, if you don't, uh, if you don't totally understand what I'm saying here, now there is something you have to understand. For this very wire here is technically speaking almost applicable to every car that have three wire uh, VSS sensors. This is socket for socket for the VSS, and the VSS is just at the the, the, the back of that. Uh, ASU shaft right there. So if I pull the camera down here, you're gonna be seeing the socket down there with three. I hope you can see it very well. Look very well. It's right there. Alright. So let me remove my hand so you see it. So it's right there. That is right underneath here. I've made a tutorial video where I replace it. So let me hook up this uh, thing on a camera stand and let's get start testing and know what we have here. Now, like I told you guys earlier on, if you have a P0500 code, all right? If you have a P0500 code, yeah, the obvious reason, the obvious first thing to do is to replace the, is to replace the VSS sensor and uh, if you replace it and the problem is not solved, then you know you are not out of the woodwork. But uh, if you replace it and it works, then it means you are a lucky one. Well, based on what I'm looking at here, I've searched some other technical details, information, the TSB for Hyundai. And unfortunately, I'm not getting my hands on the manual, the repair manual for this very car here. So it's pretty much very tricky to actually do this uh, without, uh, without the proper guidelines. But I have something here which uh, is the baseline which I talked about at the very first start. So let me power up my, my guy here. This guy has helped me a lot it's a, a war veteran it has gone through a lot of war and has come back now i need to hook, I, I need to stand this thing because even here that is right now is not in a suitable position because if i crank up the engine right now this phone can actually fall in here so it's not a good thing and it's expensive and i don't have money right now i'm investing a lot in this channel i've not started ripping it yet and you my friend out there watching this video you are the one who is going to help me grow this channel why i help you fix your car that's the deal right okay now we are on a very good uh stuff but regardless i'm going to be moving this as time goes on so let's go the first thing we need to understand about the vss here like this three wires here is if you're dealing with a, a vss uh, problem or a communication problem with a VSS, vehicle speed sensor, that's what it means. And it's three wire. The middle wire is always the signal wire. And it has a reference vote of five. Five volts reference that's supposed to be constant when you switch on the ignition. I hope that is clearly understood. Now the next one here, it could be any of these, this blue or this green, but either of them can is actually engineered to bring 12 volts power supply, constant supply, when you switch on the ignition. As for the last one here, if you later find the 12 volts, the last one should bring no volts. That should be a ground fitting the sensor. So, now the way the sensor works, I've actually turned some apart before. Good afternoon, sir. I've actually turned some apart before. There is some magnet inside it. It's not this very type here. There are some magnets inside the shaft, inside it right there, all right? So that magnet, when the ground wire, which is at the end part of here, just like you have one part here and one part 12 volts here. So when they send the 12 volts power into this guy right here. Now, if you spin that, if you spin the shaft, it's gonna be, uh, alternating that frequency that that, that a signal wire which is actually the middle one and when it's alternating that voltage right there that is what's going to be giving the ecu the signal the right signal of the speed at which the car is moving so the tcm or the ecu 
whichever but mostly the TCM will be able to know the right speed the right gear to select based on the right speed which they uh, based on the speed the current speed which the car is running now i talked about something previously which i want us to go back to a little bit because that's going to be really make this whole thing very comprehensive the man said and i quote a, a car a guy walked on the car and the car wouldn't shut down and he and, uh, and within that time i wasn't actually my resources it's not enough to get me a very good scanner. The scanner which I have have expired and they blocked a lot of things, including Hyundai. I'm talking about launch here. So I was shut off. I couldn't be able to have access to know exactly what is going on, to know why the car wouldn't sh shut down. So he later told me he called a douchebag guy who actually later did some sort of coining engineering and uh that cleaning engineering which I'm talking about here, that's this wire right here. So that wire goes right here, that's it right here. So I don't know how he did it, but let me show you what he did to cut off the power. So I don't know if that fault actually affected this whole thing because this car was running fine after I finished fixing the first time when it started having this issue. But then it was actually bringing uh, uh, some sort of a code. Yeah, but it's not a VSS code, but it's actually an input shaft sensor code. So you can see this wire right here. He hook it up to this very relay right here. Let me pull it and show you. So here, he twisted this one out and he hook up the power, the, the 12 volt power from the ignition switch to here and hook the ground here. But he bent it either way so that they don't make contact with the system circuitry. I hope that is clearly understood. So, but, in my own testing, in order to decode exactly what the problem is, I have to try to put this car back the way the manufacturer has designed it and see if that is gonna work. But guess what, guys? I actually did, but no improvement. But now, there is something very interesting that catches my attention here. After I revised it back to the manufacturer specification, I started the car and was able to shut off the engine without this bypass even after putting back this relay the way the manufacturer have actually engineered it so that tells me uh that this actually isn't the problem then after that also i also tested the power coming from here and nothing changed so that very testing right now is what i want to take you guys through so that we do it together so you understand how this thing i just explained it to you guys previously i know a lot of you guys will still want to know how it's tested now the first phase of the testing is you have to have this probe and you have to turn this uh, multimeter on and set it to 12 volts or uh, automatic uh, to read uh, the the battery voltage or the power going in there so let me put the probe here on the negative terminal and on the positive terminal here you should see 12 you see 12.2 that's a good one right but normally a very good battery should be given 12.3 so now in order to to decode which one is the ground wire here all right we have to hook the red one to the the red probe to the positive terminal of the battery which is here then we use this one when we switch on the ignition when we look at it anyone that gives us zero is actually no anyone that gives us a 12 volts power is actually the ground but in order not to mess it up we can do the otherwise we can use this same guy here the positive probe we use it to test for the one that's gonna give us uh, a zero volts anyone that gives us a zero volts right there while we are hooking this one up to the negative terminal here then we use the positive uh, probe to search for which of the socket which of the pins here is gonna give us uh, a zero volt anyone that gives us a zero volt after when we turn on the ignition then that's the guy so let me go ahead and turn on the ignition and let's uh, start testing but before then I think let me verify so you know what I'm talking about here so let's look at it here why I'm testing you're gonna be looking at the meter here so we take a look at it with the so there is no vote here 
that's five millivolt that's quite negligible in the middle one there is no volt 0 0.0007 millivolts and the third one is 0 0.004 so which means it requires ignition on before it can send the power so let me go ahead and switch the ignition on Finally, you can hear the ignition making some noise there and even the fuel is running continuously. So let's go ahead. I'm going to do this real fast because I have bypassed the fuel pump or relay and give it a straight power. So let me go ahead and check for the zero volt here and see if we can get it the same. We have 8.5. That's not the, that's not one and that's actually coming from the blue line here. So let's check this one here. We have 11 volts. So that's the 12 volts right there. We got a problem, man. Then the middle one, we are getting 0 .5, 0 0.15 millivolts. We are having a 12 volts, 11 volts from the other side there, which looks like there is a drop, you know? But let us test it in the other way around again. Now, for us to get uh, the to know which one is the ground, we have to test ground to ground. Anyone that gives us power here is actually the system uh, 12 volts supply. So I'm going to be holding on to this green here and let me test to the chassis of the car. And let's see the engine part of the car or here is given 11 volts. So which means that's a 12 volts which they but they are having a, a voltage drop it's supposed to be 12 volts but that's the green one there so we can say okay that one has passed and let's take check this one here it's giving eight volts that's a problem there should be no votes on the blue one there should be only 12 volts on the one line so that's the problem so it seemed like that blue line there is getting power somewhere let's check for the signal vote if we're gonna get a five volts reference and we have 0 0.10 millivolts that's not up to even one volt so guys this is where the problem is for most of you who have replaced the vss sensor without going through this process now you've lost the money right there because that's pretty it's not cheap all right it's not cheap i've seen it on the internet it's not cheap to buy so in this regard what i'm gonna do right now is uh I'm gonna start the car because I don't want the car, the battery to run down. See, test run it again and see if I'm gonna get a different reading. So, let me start the car. The engine is on. Let's rev it a little. Okay. Now let's go ahead and test it again and see if the reading is going to change. We got 10 here. It was 8 previously, so let's check the green one. We got 13, which is the normal volt which is supposed to be bringing. But it's even above, it has up about 4 volts extra when the, when the alternator kicks in. Now here we're having 10 volts here. We're not supposed to be having a 10 volts here. We're supposed to be having zero volts, all right? And uh, it's actually positive power. So which means there is a power shorted to that positive there. There is a positive power shorted to this very blue line here. Because when I turned the meter the other way around, it was giving negative, all right? But now, is giving positive 12 volt 10.2 volts so let me go ahead and shut this car down let's take this diagnostics to another new level okay guys here we are and at this very point here there is a lot of things that can actually be wrong with the system that makes it now you can 
agree with me here that the blue line that's supposed to be supplying zero volts is supplying eight volts without the engine on but when the engine comes on it turns from eight volts to 10.2 volt that's crazy now the green line which is supposed to be bringing 12 volts supply with ignition on brings 11 volts but when the car kicks on it brings a whole lot of the power which the alternator using charging the battery down here which is 13.7 i hope that's correct right now the signal wire which is actually supposed to be reporting back to the ecu on the speed of the vehicle at the at which uh, the, the 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 car is moving is zero volt so that's a whole lot of problem at this very point here better it's always very good uh uh, this thing to use oscilloscope but since i don't have a oscilloscope i'm gonna see if i'm gonna trace this wire with you guys down to the tcm let's see what could actually be the problem i forgot to tell you that you're gonna also say that they replace it ecm that's the ecu of this very car when they when they couldn't get the firing order correct but after when he checked changed the engine everything comes better and fine so let's go ahead and move up to the next level at this point we are not limited to any some sort of testing to get to the root cause of this very problem okay the next question which a lot of you guys are going to be asking is which i'm also asking myself is where is the ecm and where is the tcm of this car well I think they hide it quite in a place that you might not even so much think about. It is uh, for some other cars which you might have come across. You can be able to spot them either in the firewall here or in underneath the, the wiper blade assembly model or underneath the glove compartment. But here, this for obvious or uh, non-obvious reason is not actually there because I searched for it there and uh where i'm facing my camera right now is where the tcm and the ecm of this very car is now since they say that they have replaced the ecu i don't know if it is the ecu that's causing this problem but the good luck that uh, the man have here uh, which i think is going to be helpful in this diagnosis and troubleshooting that we're doing today is that he already got a donor uh, TCM so we can test it out if suppose this is the TCM that is creating this whole nightmare that we're trying to solve so there is a screw holding it here which is this guy right here so you need to lose it to be able to assess this very place and pull it down and there you go. I've been dealing with a lot of rubber here, god damn. So right now, if you look in there, you're gonna be seeing that yellow wire there, which I believe is for airbag uh, wiring harness. But underneath right there is where the TCM and the ECM of this very car is. If you look down there, you can see it right there. So what I'm about to do right now is I need to test that uh, to test the power going in there because I can see two, I can identify two color right there. And if you look very closely, you're gonna see it right here. I try to separate it, but I'm not seeing the black guy. That's the green and the blue which uh, we're looking at though there are some other blue in this area and uh, some other green but uh i got a key on ignition that's why it's making this whole noise let me pull it out okay finally that noise is out okay so right here there is a couple of things that can actually be the problem either that there this uh the one that's supposed to be bringing a ground wire is shorted to positive i don't know how that is how that is possible but i was thinking maybe there is some sort of uh 
a surgeon that came around here and cut some wires but none of the wire is cut they are all intact so with that said i'm gonna try to check for power here with ignition on and see if i'm gonna get exactly the same thing i got right there while i was while we we're in the engine bay so let me go ahead and stand this camera but uh and see if i'm gonna zoom in so you participate but either way even if i'm not zooming in i think you should be able to see it i will still give you the results because we are meant to do this together so suppose if you have this problem you can follow the tutorials which have this uh, video uh troubleshooting guide which i'm making right now to to solve it anyway, and uh kindly guys if you're coming to my channel like I said, you're going to help me grow this channel, please. You're going to help me grow this channel. And I'm going to help you to fix your car problem. That is the deal. All right? So the first phase of that deal is you subscribing to my channel. and Give this video a thumbs up. At least even if I didn't uh, succeed in giving you the lasting solution to that problem, I've given you, you have known exactly where the problem is coming from. And I've given you a base mark where to start from. And if you're following as you're following right now, who knows we might even get the problem be able to can be able to get it solved now this is the donor dcm which the man say he have and this is the previous ecu which he have on this very car made by siemens siemens german and the, the one which the other technician replaced then the good thing there is that the both of these guys are right there so what i want to do right now is i want to test the wire that goes right in there and uh, possibly not even possibly i'm gonna pull out the socket the socket that actually goes in there so we go back to test it right there again that's some that that just popped into my head right now we pull out that socket that belongs to that tray that uh green the house the green and the the blue right there then we go over to the engine bay and check and test again and see if the voltage comes back as it's supposed to or there is no power at all if there is no power at all then we can be damn sure that the problem that is making this creating this whole nightmare is coming from the tcm maybe a bad tcm perhaps so let me go ahead put on my multimeter to voltage range all right so i'm gonna keep it uh here i don't know if you guys can see it can you see it okay i think some of you guys can see it so I've sharpened some uh this my stuff enough so I can be able to use it and pierce the wire a little bit. I need to shift this seat back. Oh shit. I think that's the maximum it can be able to move. Which is not a good thing for me. Not a good thing at all. Okay. So right here. Oh. Uh, right here. I don't know if my head is blocking this whole thing here so i'm gonna go ahead and uh i'm gonna be taking ground from this guy here all right i'm gonna be taking ground from here i'm certain by now that you know that the ground of every car is the chassis so i'm gonna go ahead and pierce the wire right there and let's see what we're gonna get through back probe this is quite difficult and if I decide that I want to pull this uh, guy out Well, this is not going as planned because my hands, my two hands can't even go in there to pierce this wire accordingly. But this very point here, uh, I have to do what is necessary, what I have to do. Even if it means cutting the wire, so I can have a very good uh, access to that place right now without creating any damage because right now my hands can't even reach it. Okay, but well, let me try one more time. Even if I block the camera just to pierce the wire.
okay it's quite tricky but at this point i have to put down the ignition on because i'm not seeing any power there oh my gosh how do i get this done right now i need a syringe or a pin or a needle okay i'll switch on the ignition so let me go ahead and test it Well, the blue line is fluctuating. As I was uh, testing it, it was fluctuating. Let me see if I can give you guys a close shot. So, if it is fluctuating, then there is every tendency. You can see it right there. There is every tendency that that's not the line. But that's quite shocking because, okay, right now, is no vote so if the blue line here is showing no vote which normally is supposed to be and it's showing white inside the engine bay let me test the green wire this is where the wiring harness uh, wiring uh, diagram comes into play because if the wiring diagram is here it's going to tell me which pin those vss is connected okay I think you got a ghost here because right now I'm piercing on the green wire and uh, there don't seem to be any power either so which means alternatively the two wires are a different wire entirely This is okay. I think I'm getting contact, but it's fluctuating. It's just coming and going. I'm trying to get direct contact here. Okay, it's giving me zero volts. You can see it right there. If I remove it, you read and uh, so that's not the wire right there. The crazy son of the beach got a lot of blue, wi blue wire, blue wire. Look at another green wire right there. Let's check this guy also. Nothing. So it means I'm gonna come over to here to check this other green wire because my own belief here is that the blue wire must be coming from the TCM. And no signal so here we got a problem man now the other question there is what if this wire is actually coming from the ECU so at this very point right now I'm gonna start to unplug some stuff because here let me show you guys without wiring diagram I can see the blue the green and the black all in the ECU so which means there is every tendency let me get this guy out hey come out this son of a bitch come on Scott. come on so there could be every tendency that the ECM because the both of them work together the ECM has to take the power first analyze it before it send it to the TCM so the both of them can have actual reading of what is going on between that VSS because the both of them are actually using it all right so you can see it right let me show you okay so you can see the blue wire here you can see the green here and you can see the black here so I'm certain that this is where the power is coming from but at this point I also need to test it because here we cannot make any assumption assumption is not in the chart we have to be sure absolutely sure that this is where the power is coming from so we can make our verdict now I'm gonna start this car so the the battery doesn't run down okay now this is good so let me go ahead and and pinch one of this way because this one is going to give me a lot of flexibility ok 
Okay, that's not him. I'm getting 21. Let me check this green. I'm getting 21 millivolts. In the other one, we're getting a whole lot of. volts on the other side but this one here we're getting 20 here uh, 20 millivolts so that's not it but let me pause this camera I'll get back okay I am back so I want to get a, I went to sharpen this guy here so it can give me exactly what I want. So let's go ahead and pierce this guy right now. And we're getting 19 millivolts. So probably this is not the wire, it's still the wrong wire. So what do we do right now? I'm seeing another green wire somewhere else. This is a whole lot of... Seriously, there are too many green wire and Hyundai is the worst of all because here there is no stripes to differentiate any of the wire so you have to figure this shit out yourself. This is crazy. Let me shut this car down and start to unplug some things and start to see things what I what I need to see for myself so we take this uh, test to another level let me shut this car down this is crazy I'm gonna go ahead and uh, Okay, here we go. Uh, I'm gonna pull this guy here. My dear, even getting these guys out here, it's not, it's not easy stuff. Okay, I'll pull this guy out. Whoa. Yeah. Okay. So let me go ahead and uh, let's put the ignition on and go and do the testing and see if we can get any power on that VSS power line again. Let's see if we can get the DSS, VSS power here. I really want to get this solved. I really want to get this solved, man. I like challenges. Even if it is hectic, you know? But not the one that claims life, you know? I don't like the one that claims life because you can be solving challenges when you're dead. So, if 12 volts come from here, so which means here and here should give a 12 volt power supply and it's giving minus six. So which means there is a disagreement. There is a disagreement. Let me check here. Okay. Okay, it's still supplying. In this one here, it's also still supplying. Okay, now what I, yes, this one is also supplying. So which means that's not the socket. So let's go ahead and uh, plug that one back in. So let's go ahead and plug that in. We plug this one in, we unplug this one. Okay. Check it again. 
and see what we got. We're getting a solid 11 volts there, no difference, and 8 volt there, no difference. So that's not him. Okay, so we're gonna plug that one back in, and then we're gonna unplug the last one. Okay, we unplug this one. Go ahead again. This time, there should be some good news. Come on, guys. You can't be doing this whole thing without good news. Show us some love, man. Show us some love. Oh, shit. It's still 11, man. So, which means, from my own analysis on this very video right now, I can say that the power is not directly coming from the TCM. So, which means the power has to be coming from the ECU. So, all this bunch of greens that you have here definitely is coming from there. So, there is every tendency that it's actually the ECU that is creating this mess. So, what is the whole deal there? I'm going to swap this ECM to another one since there is a donor here. But before doing that, I'm going to hook up the power battery, remove the key from the ignition and yep that's it so we're gonna remove this guy here even if it doesn't i'm gonna remove this one so let's go ahead and unhook the ecm and uh, get this one that was there previously while the car was running like a champ because if suppose the power is coming from the TCM with all these three wires which I disconnected one after the other then there should be some Christmas but there is no Christmas okay the moment of the truth but that, that's gonna be really shocking why would they root the I mean anyway they have their own plan you know like the Joker always say, got them a plan. And uh, wow, this is another thing here. So, but the good thing is that none of the connectors fitted in each other. So, let me go ahead and unhook it. I've actually delayed this job for quite a long time. So, and uh, that's how mechanic works, right? You don't put too much pressure on yourself that you don't take time out when the job doesn't want to get fixed you gotta take time out and breathe take time to cross-reference what you've done and know what you're missing then regain your power and get back to the field and continue the grind so that's it so i'm gonna go ahead and uh, to unpin this ECM, it has a tab here, which I believe you press it and hold on. But the other one has a Pujo kind of tab right here. Then you swing this down, and that should come off. But I think they locked it with this last one, so which means if you want to be uninstalling it. You're gonna be starting with the last one, but let's go to the next one here. Can you see that? Because this thing is really tight. I'm trying to, okay. Here we got some. Okay. Okay. There we go. But it won't get out. So which means this guy here has to get out first, okay. I've got this one out. I press in this two tab. It's just one tab, sorry. Press this one down, and this one is out. Press this one down, this one is out. Now if you're doing this for some cars of what a high and die, there's gonna be a security problem when you disconnect this. So make sure you got a scan tool that can be able to reprogram another code another brain boss into it, another ECM into it. So here the last one is the same as the first. So I'm gonna go ahead and press it. 
and press it and pull. This is not working with one hand guys, so let me let me try to use two hands. Okay. Yeah. So I removed it and uh, switch the one it came with in it and let's see what happens. So the last one goes into the last one. Don't worry, you can miss the socket because the socket can go in. They are not the same socket. See, press it, take the giant one in there. Seats and take this one in. It works. Another giant one in. Deal with a giant one first. Okay. Then the last guy. At this point here, we might just want to keep it somewhere back there. Back there, just like that. It's okay. So the next thing I want to do right now is to go back in there and test and see. Put the ignition on. Put connect the battery power on. Uh, put the ignition on from connecting the battery. Then connect the ignition. Then come back and test. Test it one more. So have the head here. Go ahead and plug it back in place. Okay, so we come over here. After all, this car is already looking for a junkyard to go and rest in peace and we're trying to pull this over and put it on, put the ignition on. And let's see, even if the car doesn't start, it should be able to give us what we want. If, the, if this is actually where the problem is coming from, so, Let's go ahead and test it one more time and see if we're gonna get a Christmas light. Come on guys, gotta show us some love. Show us some love, man. Okay. Okay, this is 11 volts. Let's see if you give us no volt here. Well, it's the same 8 volts, okay? and nothing on this one so which means there's a problem it's not the ECM that is creating this problem it's actually there is a wire that is shorted inside nobody knows if a wire burned between here between the firewall here and into the car and at this very moment right now I can't be able to start tearing this whole thing apart right now to trace that wire because the next move right now is to trace this wire down to where it's connected to the ECM, uh, the ECU, which I'm certain that is where the whole thing is. Because it's not coming from the TCM. And since I couldn't find the wire, it means I'm going to continue this episode next time when I find the wiring diagram that's going to give me where the power is, where this VSS uh, socket is coming from. I'm really sorry, guys, that I wasn't able to get this problem resolved, but at least most of you who followed have find how we've been going through this whole process from point A, B, C and the rest of them and including swapping the, TC, the ECM. So guys, uh, I don't know if uh, maybe swapping the TCM also is going to be helpful, right? Let me shut down the car and let's swap that real quick before uh, I give up 
for now to come back later so I don't know what the hell maybe something burned and uh, how, why will it be the VSS at a target let me pull this guy out Got all day. Come out, you son of a bitch. Okay, I'll get this guy out. Gotta get this guy out. Oh, she got legs. She got legs, man. Even with your leg, gotta come out here. I don't care. Whatever leg you got, but you gotta step out of here. Okay, so. So right now, I'm gonna find a, a screwdriver to get. Uh, would there be any need? It seems like they've got these two things swapped or something. But uh, as it is right now, I've actually open this one up and does nothing seem to be burned inside it so let me go ahead and uh, swap it real quick let's test if it works then we come back to put the leg and if it doesn't work we can come back to switch it up okay that's in there that's in there locks in place it makes some noise so they have been swapped this is the one that come out of the car so let's go ahead put the ignition on and test it for the last time okay here we go here we go Here we go. I'm gonna touch one to the ground. This one gives 12 volts, so should be power coming. 11 volts. Let's see if this one is gonna give zero volts. Eight volts. So guys, it's neither a TCM or ECU problem. There is a shot within the line, and we don't know where that shot is coming from. And at this very moment, I'm exhausted, honestly. This, if you have taken your time to watch this video down here, thank you for your time. Thank you for watching. Make sure you subscribe, give me a thumbs up, and I'll catch you guys later on the next episode when I get the wiring diagram. I don't know how long it's gonna take. Bye for now. Uh, like I told you guys, uh, I've tried, I've put a lot of effort right now so you guys can see diagnosing this, and uh, at last it wasn't really bringing up what I'm looking out for, but we were able to be able to find out exactly where the problem lies that there could be short inside there's a short inside where it shorted to the positive the ground that's supposed to be supplying the power to the vss is shorted to the positive i'm certain maybe that is even where the power from the signal wire is lost so guys we'll continue on the next episode when i find the wiring diagram thank you for watching thank you for subscribing i'll catch you guys later bye for now mm -hmm.